This is a football film. But it's not just about football. This is a story about dreams. This is a story about friendship, about love, about achieving a dream. There's been films about baseball and basketball and golf and, and you name it. And uh, it just seemed incredible to me that uh, the world's biggest sport has never had a decent budget for filmmakers to go and make a movie. It started with uh, Mike Jeffries and Matt Burrell when they were at the World Cup in Japan and they crafted this crazy idea. A lot of people looked at us, particularly at me, with a cocked head and a raised eyebrow when they heard what we were looking to try and achieve. It's a three-act structure. Act one, the first film, is a classic Rocky rags to riches story. Number two is The Fall from Grace. Movie number three, he plays for his native team of Argentina, the World Cup in Germany 2006. It kind of seemed like a, a no-brainer to us if we could make a film that resonated on a dramatic level about a kid's story. The three of us went over to Paris and met with FIFA, the governing body of football. They've really got very excited about this and, and they see the potential. They've really gotten behind us and shown so much support. It's amazing to see how far we've come and to see where it's gone. Good, good, good. V camera! Action! Mr. Dornhelm, this is the young man I was telling you about. Hi. From Los Angeles. In order to make a successful sports film, your emphasis must always be on the character and the story you're telling. I think by finding an actor first, we did the right thing. Action! We wanted to cast somebody that wasn't already a huge superstar, like Sylvester Stallone in, in Rocky. Nobody knew him. If we had a really big, well-known leading actor in that role, it would take away from the rags of a story. If you do something that you love, I think you're going to do it right. He is the kind of romantic heart of the story, and he just has a natural glow in front of the camera. He's also a great violinist, I've heard. I keep convincing him to bring his violin in. He's like, no, no. I played classical music since I was a kid, and and the funny thing is that football is like that because if you don't start when you're a kid and if you don't play for years, you're not, you don't make it. My level of football, of course, was zero. I played in school, but nothing professional. Some of the boys didn't realize he was an extra. They thought he was one of the first team extras because he's been that good. He doesn't want to be treated any different. He wants to be treated like one of the boys as a footballer so he can get into his character. And Andy's been very, very helpful. Without him, I think this would be impossible. Kudo, start here, where the referee's jogging straight back that way, on action. Andy Ansom, um, apart from having been a great professional himself, he's also somebody very experienced in doing this kind of filming. But we work on things that are going to work on camera. I'm not asking him to be a professional footballer. He's worked so hard over the last few weeks to actually get it right, because he wants to get it right. He's professional in what he does as an actor. He's got a cracking shot on him, and he's got speed, you know, and he's strong for his size. Man, if I had a team, he'd be in it. I was training like four or five hours a day at the beginning. I broke both my ankles the first couple of weeks, stress fractures. Everybody was kind of like, oh man, is he going to make it? Because it's hard, you know, especially if your body's not used to it. Have you awesome, there you go. We had to establish which club was going to be the main character in the movie, and, and Newcastle appealed for many, many different reasons. I thought it was a cinematic city. St James Park is on a hill on top of this turn-of-the-century town. We have so many beautiful shots of Newcastle, and the bridge and the sunsets, old buildings and the new buildings, and it's the, uh, the contrast. And the city has so much flavor. You know, we were in their world. 
every day and it's very intimate. So I think they were very kind to let us go inside, you know, the facilities and, and see what happens for real. Soon take one, hey Marker. Guys, you know what you have to do. The hardest thing has been the weather in Newcastle, the unforgiving weather. Love it. It was so cold, it was so windy. Sometimes they've been outside in minus five for ten hours just solidly playing football in the freezing cold. Yeah, we were shooting for two days under these rain machines, the wind blowing, a lot of cold hands and feet. There was a lot of sliding around and uh, I'm not sure if you recognise any of us to be honest because we just covered in mud. Incredibly hard work in the sub-zero temperatures, motivating people. Yeah, we're freezing there. <laughs> I've seen grown men cry over those two days. And I'm getting tackled and totally beat up. He was a big lad, so he just said, oh, forget it, just hit me. So I did. I'm told it looks really real. <laughs> Hey, let me introduce my mates. That's Susu. Hola. This is Raul. Santiago Muniz. Hola. If you're going to have some sports personalities in your film, it's best to have some of the best in the world. Be my fan. We had a scene where Santiago is in London for the Fulham game and they have a celebration drink afterwards and the guys from Real Madrid are there. Action! Great football players like that, they're very used to being in front of a camera. My grandma, she loves you, man. Well, carry on playing like that, you'll be there one day. David Beckham is a great guy and he seems to take to it very quickly and very easily. We are very lucky to have some of the best football players in the world in that room that day. See you around. Nice to meet you. Lee Kemba. Making a movie about soccer is a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing in that everybody cares so much about it, everybody's so passionate about it, but it's a curse that if you don't nail the authenticity and if you don't show the integrity of the game, you're dead, you lose your entire audience. There were two different approaches to doing the football. In Los Angeles, we wanted it to be a little more scrappy. So more handheld camera was used and aesthetically, Los Angeles was always gonna be a warmer environment, the saturation and the color, whereas Newcastle and London was gonna be colder when we got to Newcastle, we were trying to use much longer lenses to crush the backgrounds. We kept the cameras very low to make the people on the screen seem very big. You know, depending on what part of the story we were trying to tell, quite a lot of thought went into what should be the background for this game. What Danny and his team have done creatively has never been done in any sports film. You go see the shorts you're feeling, go up to him. I wanted the games to be close up. When you watch game on television you're so far away from the action you're not going to see what they're talking about on the field i always wanted to be like that on the manager like that on the players so the whole thing felt very close up and like we were in the middle of it and for the first time you feel the speed and the real skill of the game because our cameras were all over it Put that one more time. The way we are filming the action is incredibly ambitious through technology and filming real football games with Alan Shearer, with David Beckham, with all the guys. That's it, show the goal, show the goal. I would stand at a bank of monitors in a very, very loud stadium with the script supervisor watching each camera saying, if I wanted to go tighter, closer, that's a good moment, Mark, that's. We like that corner, we like that corner. Yeah, got that. When they played Chelsea, when Cliver scored that header, I, I couldn't believe it. They were gracious enough to allow us to have our actors run on the field with their football players. I would be waiting for the final whistle and bouncing up and prancing across the field, hurling my arms around unsuspecting players. And I remember some people kind of recognizing me and saying, yeah, you played great, you played great. <laughs> Once we have the footage on film, a day or two later, we bring back some actual players and the actors, and we create the actual goal that was scored. The director will choose what parts of the game he wants to use and then recreate the whole thing of putting our players in the positions, doing exactly the same moves. And then when you cut it together and throw in some CGI and some blue screen and some other wizardry, 
Hopefully people believe the experience. When people get lost in the moment and believe that Kuno is playing for Newcastle and Alessandra is playing for Newcastle. It looks pretty amazing. We don't think it's ever been done before that way. If you think about it, it was just like a, a bunch of actors pretending to play soccer and then a bunch of football players pretending to act, but it worked. Cut! And I think what we set out to do is make a film about this young Santiago Munoz and about how you should never give up on a dream. I think that's a story that will never get old.